The program is still this morning on ITV bringing us to uh, a talking point where we'll be looking at what Nigeria has done in terms of having its own uh, domestic flight, uh, indigenous flight, so to speak, going to other countries like uh, the UAE. And of course, we have heard that discussion with the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Surika, where he had to, you know, also give back to UAE for not allowing our own indigenous flight, airpiece, you know, that frequency. Just three, he applied for uh, just uh, uh, three frequency, but he was given just one, while their own frequency is 21. 21 frequency. That is to say, they will fly into Nigeria 21 times in a week, which is to say three times in a day. One in Abuja and two in Lagos. But when our own indigenous flight applied for just three frequency, he, uh, he was given ju just one. And the minister says, no, we can't. Uh, that bilateral agreement cannot stand. That bilateral relationship is not favorable uh, to Nigeria. And so uh, this too has to be cut. And we've seen that he cut that to just two. Uh, one and they will be flying into the, the, the country uh, only on Thursdays. This is one bold step that we have seen the APC government taking since uh, uh, they came on board in 2015. It's a very good one, Dominic, yes. that uh, if we have a bilateral relationship, which will, of course, enable you fly into another country for economic gains, we should also have our own fly into yours also for economic gains. Uh, that, that's why it's called bilateral um, mm. relationship. You will benefit from me, I benefit mm. from you. It should not be a one-way thing. Mm. If our Saudi Arabia or the UAE will decide that their flights will come in, Emirates flights will come into Nigeria 21 times. In a week. In a week. What does that mean? It means they are going to be making more money from us while we just, mm. uh, uh, they are making money for them and they and in the return, we get nothing for it. So it was a good step. We, although that that audio, like you, like mm. rightly said, you report, was not on the public domain, but it was a leaked uh, mm. report. But mm. did as me, the government of Nigeria actually took a bold step in doing that. You see, before now, Emirates was banned. For some time, we were restricted from coming into Nigeria before all these uh, agreements was made. But I, I was surprised when when I listened to that report that Nigeria. Uh, has decided that uh, Emirates mm, can resume flights. Resume flights mm. when all these things are ongoing. But mm. let's see how it goes. But we just believe that bilateral relationship. What mm. it means is that both countries should mm. be able to benefit from each other. It should not be a situation by one country. And don't forget that that uh, Dubai or Emirates flight is one that mm. Nigerians patronize almost on a daily basis because mm. everybody wants to go out there to do. Our businesses. So, if we have just one of our own local air fleets, the piece there for mm. to fly into uh, uh, the UAE, I don't think there's any problem if we get even up to 15. If you feel because you know, of the yeah. traffic that you get into your country, into the UAE, that's why you're reducing uh, the flight numbers for Nigerians. Let, let it be to a marginal number that at the end we'll know that we are getting something from these uh, flights. You know, when it comes to this kind of uh, uh, agreement or relationship, it's, uh, that should be Pareto optimal, which mm. is to say that no side, uh, you know, will, will lose. Yeah, yes. uh, we, according to the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, yeah, it's a relationship that should have gotten equal, equal um, slots, you know, equal operation. As Emirates has 21, you know, uh, you know, uh, flights in a week, Nigeria should have that same uh, for t uh, 21 in in a week. But you do not blame uh, Dubai. You do not blame Emirates. Uh, according to the minister, we blame ourselves because we don't have, you know, uh, that uh, number of flights that can do, uh, you know, such sequence. But we do have one uh, airpiece that says, okay. Uh, I can do three, and he approved that. Yes, do three. If you, if we have a foreign counterpart that is doing twenty-one, three in a day into our country, we do not have, uh, you know, airline or of course we do not. We 
we have, but do not have the number of, 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 flights. of flights they have uh, that can do equivalent of what they are doing. And one says, okay, I can do three, and you approve three. Why are you cutting that into, into one? You just want to make the whole money and ensure that the little uh, forex we have is repatriated back to your country. No, he cannot take that. And that is why we saw that very bold step. If, Dominic, other ministers can do this same thing in other bilateral relationships, you know, they have, you know, with other nationals. I'm sure Nigeria will definitely uh, be, be adored before international community uh, in no distant time. Yes, if we can step our foot mm. on ground that, yes, this is what we actually mm. have. I remember it's not... For example, in the pharmaceutical market, market, yes, that's where what we, have, we have all of that here. If mm. you go to Idu, if you go to uh, um, Chalawa in Kano, if you go to Bompai in Kano, if you go to, uh, uh, you know, Agbara of o Ogun State, you go to Ibadan, you come to Kaduna, we have all this board. Because... Our taste and fashion is just around those coming in from abroad. We are just going, you know, and and, and it's keep down. affecting our, our economy. And you see, just like you said, we keep mm. to send back, we repatriate back mm. foreign a currency. I think the policies, if you are going into an agreement, mm. you should always have it in mind that what will be for your people. Mm. What, how do you develop your own economy? Mm. For instance, we saw the textile, the Nigerian textile in Kaduna mm. is dead. That's because government mm -hmm. allowed inflow of foreign a foreign extra. material you go to in if you go to indian before now they were like us but you go to a point that they stop importation of textiles you don't bring in textile from any part of the world into indian that's why you see when you if you watch most of the indian movies they all wear their their mm -hmm. own local made textile even down to the suits we're wearing now they make it there in their country i think that was how most of these developed countries like china japan that's how they started they made it a policy that we are going to ensure that what we produce in our country is what we consume not to allow those who bring in and then take away from you your 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 hard-earned money back to their country to develop their country but it's a sad one. Just like you said, I will just uh, assume that other ministers will take a bold mm -hmm. step from this. For instance, uh, sometimes they go, the Minister of uh, Science and Technology mm -hmm. was lamenting that at this stage, Nigerians still import pencils and toothpicks from abroad. Mm -hmm. These are things that we can easily... You don't need a big factory for And we still to, do it, don't And we still do it up to this moment. And we just hope that with the new policy of the government, the zero, uh, 0 0.5... Uh, executive order five mm. that uh, everything you produce in nigeria should have local content mm. let's see if we can be able to meet up the mm. demands of nigeria then we'll now start thinking of exporting we have so mm. many for mm. it, when you look at the agricultural aspect, uh, uh, sector when you go to places like benue uh <coughs> kogi states some of the states where they produce fruits like cashew mangoes oranges you see them spoiling on the roads Mm. Well, have, during the season during the season if we mm. have enough factories mm. that will convert these things to mm. juice and before you know it you create job you create markets for people who will do that and we don't need to depend on imported juice mm. and sometimes they come into the country no, we can so produce and export and export that's the major thing when you export you make more money mm. that's if you have enough but the problem is that we don't even have enough to consume in our country yeah honestly thumbs up for hadi sirika for that mm. bold step taking and if we're going to uh, look into ministry by ministry, what they can also do, you know, in relation to what Addis Rika has done, for example, trade and investment, we look at, if you go to Kaduna State, you discover that one of the staples there is ginger. Mm. And this ginger is consumed mainly in Nigeria. But guess what? I mean, I'm talking about the processed ginger. Yeah. It is exported, converted, value is added and then it is now you know imported back to the country that is that is not too good Dominic. that's not too good if the minister of trade and investment can look into that that process of co converting ginger into you know ginger tea ginger you know, juice, ginger, ginger yes. juice Spices and now there's and now this. ginger chips yeah you've seen ginger chips all this conversion are done elsewhere not in this country and th this is if like, we this can is have, have been done here but they are not being patronized by nigerians because yeah. the we, the government itself has not really 
assist these local industries you, that are doing this. That's the point. So if we can have, you know, the Minister of Trade and Investment step into this and say, look, uh, this ginger, there should be embargo. They should not go out of this country. Any, 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 any business man or woman that's interested in converting uh, ginger to other, other products in other countries can come in. Just come in, we'll give you land. Come in, we'll give you, um, we'll, we'll give you tax rebate so that when you cite the industry here, you are definitely going to engage at least 60% of the workforce. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. You're going to take, take many people off the labor market. But that is not done. That area, if we look into it, is really going to help Nigeria, you know, have GDP increase to a favorable level. Mm -hmm. If you look at the uh, health ministry now, you look at the pharmaceutical industry we talked about earlier, many of these um, raw materials are exported, you know, to uh, foreign uh, countries where uh, it is where the, the, and they return where, back where, to of us. course and they return back to us. We have, if you go to Nigerian Institute of Pharmaceutical um, Research and Development, NIPRID, and all the you know uh, agencies around them, we can do this thing. We can place embargoes. Let us produce produce this uh, drugs here in Nigeria and then export it to other country if uh, it, uh, we so wish, or have this product consumed here in Nigeria. Don't make us speak. Many countries are already making money from production of vaccine, mm -hmm. you know, as a result of the, of the pandemic. We can copy and begin to produce these vaccines, but why are we so stagnant? What is happening? We have the... Uh, uh, you know, vac vaccine center in Yaba, Lagos. It can be re revived. In fact, as we speak, 10 billion naira has been allocated for that in Lagos. That of Lagos will be revived and a new one be cited in Nasarawa State. We are still here. Uh, this pandemic will come to an end and Nigeria will not make uh, m money from it. The US, the UK, uh, of this world, Russia, even India is making money from production of, of COVID-19 vaccine. We have what it takes to actually have this thing produced. We are looking the, the other way. Dominic, if you look at other sectors like the Ministry of Agriculture, you, want to, uh, you wonder why even bananas are imported into this country, why we have them in abundance. You wonder why, uh, like you said earlier, um, juice like orange juice, mango ju juice, uh, 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 yeah, and other other varieties. So yes, so many are important. When we have them in abundance here, like you said, if that if you get to the season of oranges and mangoes, you wonder uh, the level of wastage. The ones waste, uh, wasted are more than the ones consumed. Mm -hmm. As far as this country is going, what is happening? We can also have a system whereby we invite them come to this country and establish. Come to this country, we'll give you tax rebate. Come to this country and we'll create an enabling environment for you to do your business and still make that money you are making, having your product imported into this country. But it will be beneficial to Nigeria because a lot of persons that, will, that, will, that mm. will make that business to succeed definitely will be Nigeria. Of course, like, like, like you rightly said, let's, let's look at the, the COVID-19. Mm. So for, to, for some countries, you, you might say it as a blessing in disguise. Mm. Because, like you said... It's a huge they, blessing. They're making money. They're making money. Even the, when, when we had the cases of the, uh, this, this little safety me, uh, mechanisms mm -hmm. needed in Nigeria, face masks, at the point we were in yes. face masks. Yes. And these were things that... At the point face Face max went up to 500 naira for just a thousand one. 1,000 when one. it started, if you want to buy from a roadside. But these are things that we can easily manufacture. But good enough, we are seeing face masks everywhere. To mm. the extent that people now make theirs, it's open the market for people. Mm. And you can actually stay in your home and get a fabric and just do a face mask. Mm. And but if you encourage that aspect now and say, okay, fine, let's modernize these things and mm. see that we get them done in our country. To, to reduce the uh, too much dependence on importation of 
um, pharmaceutical uh, products like face masks, like PPEs, mm. and the rest of them. We, we don't need to keep depending on this country. Look even, at where the even the test kits for COVID-19 is still, still, still imported. You know, and that is why it's so, so expensive for you to, to, to do a test. PCR test of, uh, of COVID-19. It's about 40,000, 50,000 naira you know, just to do one uh, COVID-19 test. We just cannot continue this way. So, uh, in as much as we are going to be applauding Adi Sirika, uh, we hope uh, the Federal Executive Council meeting for next tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, other ministers should also be charged, be challenged to rise up to the occasion, be challenged. Yes, it's also a good one that we, we even have the guts to, to say, UK, Canada, you are also, you are also on, the, on, the, on, the, on the red list. Why should we even wait up to that extent? When we are not, these diseases are imported into this country and they are imported from the countries putting you on red alert. We, we, we waited for too long. We actually waited for too long. And I, like the UK owner, the, the UK, we are seeing it like uh, Nigeria is trying to retaliate. But I don't think it's real, like, a retaliation this time. When, when we don't have when it. we don't have it. We, the, we, we the, this have, is we imported. Be, we should, we, be the we should have, have Yes, we should have gone ahead now. earlier enough to say UK, Canada, you are on red list. This Don't is, come to this, this country. This is where we talk about sincerity of, gov of the government. If the government was really sincere in tackling this issue, we shouldn't have waited for this because we waited for too long. Now, the first, if you remember before now, there is this by, uh, by commission, by, uh, bilateral commission meeting between South Africa and Nigeria. Just immediately that commission uh, started about a few weeks ago. We had different issues from different quarters that Nigerians open their border to South Africa, where the uh, Omicron virus was actually uh, discovered. And then we saw on live TV, the South African government appreciating Nigeria for opening its border. And that is where the whole issue started from. From Nigeria, they've discovered that the people that came in with that virus were from South Africa. And then why did you not stop oh, in coming oh, Okay, up Dominic, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue from uh, where we'll stop. Yeah, you see this morning on ITV. Before the break, we're looking at what Hadis Rika, you know, has done. And uh, many Nigerians are saying, well done. Uh, what you have done is, though, uh, it's a long time that it has been expected, but it is still, it's still on point that we're able to tell, uh, you know, our foreign counterpart that, hey, uh, if we have a relationship, and you are making money from it, we also need to make money from that relationship. You just cannot have uh, your own business thriving and milking us here, and uh, why uh, you cannot allow our own indigenous uh, 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 product to also uh, sell in, in your country. Now let's take a look or uh, take a listen to what Adis Rika said in that audio. But regarding the Emirates uh, operations in Nigeria, once again we have a problem with them for those who are intending to go to uae at the moment uh, via emirates i think it's very important that they understand what is going on and so that they don't uh, see it from i mean they see it from the perspective that we've seen it so there is what is called bilateral air service agreement these are agreements between countries on how to operate or how their airlines will operate in in, in each other's uh, territory in this case um, how will App, um, um, Emirates airline operate within the shores of Nigeria and how will any Nigerian airline operate within the shores of UAE? So they've got two major airlines, um, that is the Etihad and the um, Emirates. So we negotiated a bilateral air service agreement with them um, when we came in uh, uh, as a government and we gave them the requested uh, uh, 21 frequencies meaning that they will be coming to nigeria 21 times in a week or simplified as three times a day two in lagos one in abuja well even this was something that we gave them as a buhari government gave them they were having just uh, um, 14 frequencies when we came and um, it was seven for lagos seven for abuja 
they never operated the Abuja um, for you know daily until when we came. So, anyways, they have 21 frequencies. They come to Abu, uh, Abuja once and Lagos twice every day before the emperors. Um, we have no airline that can go 21 times into UAE. So they are taking advantage of us, which is our fault, not theirs. But however, we've got an airline, Nigerian airline, which is Air Peace, that applied to get only three out of the 21 frequencies, and I approved. So um, Air Peace wanted to be going into UAE three times in a week. So UAE refused to approve the three um, frequency for uh, air peace. They insisted on giving them only one, only one frequency. And it's in Sharjah. Now, we are giving them 21 from our agreement. They ought to give us 21. So what they're supposed to do is to give air peace 21. And then air peace is up to air peace to operate all the 21 or operate just their three. So we went back and forth with them. Uh, right here in Colombia, they're here. We have been meeting with them. And um, we said, okay, well, we are going to also um, go and look at it and give you also one frequency as against 21. So they wrote us a letter, very insulting letter, that uh, referring to our, our meeting, uh, discussions and agreement, blah, 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 in accordance with the bilateral ASEPs agreement between the two countries. Um, and having uh, looked at our operations uh, with great pain, uh, we're giving you uh, or air peace one slot in Sharjah. Um, and that is the best we can do in the circumstance that our airports are full. So this is very insulting and this is not acceptable by international treaty uh, convention or agreement. And therefore I directed that they also be given uh, one frequency and into Abuja. So whoever and beginning from uh, the 12th, so from 13th, um, they will only come once into the country. So anybody who wants to get out using Emirates should get out on the 12th maximum. And then when he wants to return, he should book his returning. And he should make sure that that return date is on a Thursday. On a Thursday, and he's coming to Abuja. And uh, get his booking confirmed. I know they cannot bear the pressure because they've lost a lot of money in the, in the past. Um, honestly, who cares? But... <laughs> but they are not coming uh, they are losing a lot of money we also in Nigeria are losing the service they provide we are also losing some economy economic activity uh, as a result of their coming but the sovereignty of 200 million people is too important for us to toy with so on behalf of the 200 million Nigerians I have taken the decision that they also be given one slot simplicity and this is just for information and um, there's nothing grandstanding. It's just uh, the way things are in civil aviation. And uh, with all sense of modesty, I've been in the industry for 37 years now. And um, because we st stood our ground, that's why for those eight months, that's why they came back and obeyed what Nigeria had uh, agreed with them up in issue. And now they're coming from this, uh, this side. Then also there's a the case of Saudi Arabia uh, who put Nigeria on a ban list, no visa, no travel, etc. Um, so also Canada. Um, so today there was a meeting which I participated in Zoom meeting from the COVID-19 tax force. Just for your information also, uh, we've given our input as aviation that is not acceptable by us. And we recommend that those uh, uh, countries, um, Canada, UK, Saudi Arabia and Argentina be also put on red list. Uh, just the, like similar they did to us and if they don't allow our citizens to go into the country so who are they coming as airline to pick uh, out of our country <laughs> you know so they might as well stop coming so i'm very sure in the next uh, three days between now and uh, monday or perhaps tuesday maximum uh, all those countries will be put on red, red list from the psc 
uh, from the tax force of COVID-19. And once they are put on red list, um, which means they are banned, then of course uh, the airline would would also be banned. Um, so I'm so sorry we are going through a difficult moment, um, but we have to do it in the interest of our country.